The C and E matrix links the identified influences of the input and process mapping analysis as causes with the defined problems, their effects. Experts should now assess the strength of the relationship of each influence on each problem. The resulting influence problem pairs serve as a basis for statistical hypothesis. Thus, the C and E matrix represents the central function of Six Sigma, Y is a function of X, like no other tool. For me, the C and E matrix is the heart of the DMIC, because every relevant XY relationship will be later translated into a hypothesis, for which data is collected, statistically tested, and the significant relationships become the starting point for root cause analysis. And you remember, the root causes are the interfaces for improvements. Summer Guide lists all defined problems in the columns of the matrix, together with the respective Kano category and the calculated severity. In its rows, the matrix lists the influences of the inputs and activities of the process, together with their respective frequency and ranking. By default, all cells that relate influences and problems are empty. This means that the respective influence has no effect on the respective problem, corresponding to a 0% determination of the certain problem by the certain influence. In the other extreme, an influence strength of 100% means that the occurrence of an influence completely triggers the occurrence of the problem, or at least always leads to increasing the problem. Thus, the strength of the XY relationship can vary between 0 and 100%. In our bakery, the problem cookie taste crumbly bland, for example, occurs completely independently of the time at which the start signal is given for baking. In contrast, experts estimate that the problem cookie taste crumbly bland occurs in 40% of the cases if the input request for cookie type and delivery date is ambiguous, incomplete or not understandable, and in 80% of the cases if the expiry date of the ingredients is exceeded. If you don't know the strength of the influences yourself, then you should involve the experts again. I have had good experiences with two approaches. Ask the experts to collectively assess each cell in a workshop one by one, or let the experts make the assessment independently of each other and then calculate the mean value for each cell from these individual assessments. In any case, your question to the experts can be, how strong is the impact of the negative influence on the problem? With 0% meaning that the problem is independent from the influence, or 100% meaning that the influence always triggers or increases the problem. The C and E matrix is very large and it can be tiring for the experts to evaluate each cell. To facilitate this work, an empty cell means an influence strength of 0%. So you don't have to change anything in the matrix if there is no effect from an X to a Y. Furthermore, in the previous tools we have already assigned the influences and problems according to their type of impact and deviation to one of the categories quality, availability or consumption. Logically comprehensible, quality problems are primarily caused by influences on quality and not by influences on availability or consumption. This specificity between trigger and problem can therefore simplify the overview and processing of many cells. The premature or delayed start signal for baking, already categorized as an influence on availability, thus has more effect on the delivery time of cookies than on their taste or their energy consumption. Also make sure that you only rate XY pairs that are directly related and not the many possible indirect relationships between influences and problems. If for example a delayed start signal leads to the expiry date being exceeded, then this could have an indirect negative effect on the taste of the cookies and on the disposal of inedible ingredients. However, these indirect relationships should not be evaluated. Instead, the direct relationship of the start signal to the delivery of cookies should be assessed, as well as the direct influence of the expiry date on the taste of the cookies and on the waste or loss of ingredients. Each influence can affect several problems, and each problem can be triggered or increased by several influences. After you have evaluated the XY relationships, SigmaGuide offers three results. First, the overall effect of each influence on all problems. Second, the overall determination of each problem by all influences. And third, the risk of each influence problem pair. The last three columns of the matrix show the overall effect of each influence on all problems. 
In the third last column, the product sum is calculated for each influence. Frequency of the influence times severity of the problem times the strength of the relationship between influence and problem. In the penultimate column, the product sum is transformed into the percentual impact of each influence on all problems. And the last column shows the impact ranking for all influences. Here you can distinguish between the highly relevant and less relevant influences. The last three rows of the matrix show the overall determination of each problem by all influences. As with the influences, the product sum, the percentual determination and the ranking is calculated for each problem. Here you can distinguish problems that are relatively well determined by influences from problems that are little or perhaps not at all determined by the listed influences. If so, you might go back to the input and process mapping analysis to look for the specific trigger of this undetermined problem. The risk of each influence problem pair is the most important result. It is calculated from the available information and displayed in the chart cause and effect heat map. These risks express the basic function of Six Sigma, y is a function of x, and represent the relevance for the resulting hypothesis. Each risk in each cell results from the multiplication of the frequency of an influence, the severity of its caused or increased problem, and the strength of the relationship between influence and problem. And these risks can vary between 0 and 100%. It is unusual to speak of risks in the context of Six Sigma. But we can consider each xy pair as a risk, because risks are typically calculated based on the severity of an event and the probability of its occurrence. If you zoom out of this table, you will get an overview of all risks in your process. Please note that the red fields indicate risks higher than 10%, the yellow fields indicate risks between 1 and 10%, and the risks of the green fields are below 1%. Thus, the colors serve to prioritize the corresponding hypothesis between X and Y. And you can later easily decide which hypothesis you want to further investigate. But please, carefully check the green fields, the underlying influences and their frequency, the problems and their severity, as well as the strength of their estimated relationship before you exclude them from further analysis. For a clear presentation, please transfer the important results of the C and E heat map into the summarized and simplified template of the C&E matrix in the project storybook.